Good morning, welcome to Felixstowe TV. We're sat here at the Palatial Orwell Hotel and we're having uh, Felixstowe, I think it's his fourth book festival and it's uh, proving to be extraordinarily popular. And we're very fortunate today that we've got Giles, and you've seen the book because we put it on the head. And he's just delivered a discussion on his book, which has been somewhat overtaken by events. <laughs> but let me recommend it to you from a point of view of knowing where we were when we jumped off the cliff, because we're going to have to climb back off it, and we're going to have to make things work into the future. So. What I wanted to know, Giles, is when was this actually published? A month ago. Oh, so very, very good timing, but... Good timing. <laughs> I didn't expect in my heart of hearts that the Brexit uh, vote would, would, would get us out. But the book isn't um, overtaken by events. No, it's not. Because mostly it's about Europe's problem. Now, Britain, of course, has got special problems of its own yes. after the vote. But that doesn't mean that the whole of Europe is in a good state. And the point of the book is really to try and warn the reader right. that we've, we're slipping. We're slipping behind Asia. The, the, you mean Europe as a whole, oh, not just so. It's not just a nation state looking very much at its own name. It's the whole part. No, I mean the, the Britain in relation to continental Europe. Britain actually still has a lot of strengths. Yes. I mean, it's not quite as big an economy as everybody claims. It's not the fifth biggest economy. It's, it's the tenth biggest economy. Right. But but that's the same as for all the uh, European economies because of the rise of Asia. Right. In comparative terms, we are shrinking. The, the, the question is, is our decline going to be relative? Right. Or is it going to be absolute? I'm with you. So it's relative to, that's getting bigger, what we're saying. Relative we're saying to China right. and India and okay. so on. Right. And that's inevitable. Right. And that's a good thing, uh -huh. of course. Right. Uh, because state, there is more trade. There's more trade. Yes, more and work. The, the richer people get in China or India, the less likely are we are to have um, some sort of conflict. Right. Rich countries. Because they've got they've got something invested exactly. in in staying exactly. stable. Right. Exactly. But the Europeans are slipping. Yes. And we're slipping in absolute terms. Right. And the, the real worry is that we can live on our fat for a while. Right. But by mid-century, things start to get very sticky because we're shrinking in size. We are. We are. We're, we are. A, we're aging. Well, look at us. Exactly. You know, I mean, we're a very good example. And I mean, our cameraman, Indeed. well, there you go. He's got a long life ahead. Indeed. And the hope is that he'll have a prosperous and healthy life. And, and a safe one, secure. Yes. Yes. Because that's one of the big fears that we've had in, yeah. in the referendum. Well, in the 21st century, we're going to have to, to work twice as hard. Right. We're going to have to bring in many more immigrants. Well, that, that will upset the um, apparently the folk who are taking us out. Perhaps, but at the moment... I mean, are they aware of just how fragile the whole thing is? I don't think the folks who are taking us out are aware of very much. Right. My impression is that their knowledge of European realities that, that's is very, very slight. It is, yes. And, uh, we, we, I think that was evident in the debates, because we didn't discuss Europe, actually. We discussed... Um, we discussed Britain. We, uh, but, but there were Westminster problems, not, yes. not, not Brussels. Yes. And, and the discussion was about Britain, if not just Westminster. And it wasn't enough about Europe. And it wasn't at all about the world. No, it wasn't. Yeah. And the 21st century world is so different it, it, to it, the it. 20th century. And what I'm trying to say in this book is no single European country is going to be big enough to, to face these problems on its own. Right. And only the collective strength of Europe will work. 
I mean, I, I'm the first to say that there's a lot wrong with the others. Oh, there is. That the, the, the whole European Union needs to be rethought, restructured, yeah. streamlined, made more democratic, and so on. Mm. But I don't think leaving it is the way to reform it. Well, we're jumping ship, aren't we? I, 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 when we really, I think, when when I look at it, I mean, one my, my input on it is I was um, a serving uh, RAF technician providing a means of bombing our uh, then enemies, right. sort of Warsaw, Hungary, Russia. Um, and I was in the heart of Germany facing Ivan the Terrible across the peace. That was back in, because I happened to be in Germany in 1966 when we won the World Cup. That, that's, that's an aside, and there aren't many of us, but it was a, a, a wonderful, heady feeling to be there at that time. But the, the point was, at that time, I was living in a Europe that had Spain and Portugal as military dictatorships. So I had Greece as a, under the, 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 the uh, of the colonels. We had Hungary, Poland, and all of the Baltic states were all under the communist cause, if you like. They certainly weren't yeah. free to... We've now got to the point where we've got 28 sovereign, sovereign democracies working together for mutual benefit. And I find it inexplicable why we, in a key part of it, would jump ship at this time. I don't agree, especially as there is so much to be done to, to get things moving again. Because the, the, the European economy is not healthy. Right. Our productivity is it's very low. Yeah, I've seen that. Falling off. We have a labour shortage at the same time. That was surprising number of people. Yeah, it does. But, but I, we know we have it here in this region. Yeah. Well, you know, 4,000 construction workers we know to be short of. That's yeah. why we're not getting the houses built. We don't only really have the shortages in construction workers, but in computer technicians and in all the sort of brain. Um, Which must be our future. It's got to be our future. Yeah. So what do you do, and this seems to be a big problem throughout Europe, what do you do on perhaps the, the, uh, the nationals who haven't made the best use of their free education, perhaps are finding it hard to do that? How are you going to have gainful employment for those folk to get the sort of status that they feel engaged in the Well, <laughs> I think it's a very tricky question, mm. but I think the first thing you have to do is to get the economy moving. Yes. And the other thing you have to do is to face facts. Right. And if you face the fact that the British economy has been doing relatively better than some of the continental economies, because we have brought in so many immigrants yes, we have. Well, that has fueled growth. And I think you, part of the, the answer to Europe's 21st century problem is being realistic. Right. Recognizing the weaknesses and fixing them. Right. Because we, we are inclined, and this isn't a criticism just in Britain. No, it's generally right yeah, across yeah. Europe. Yeah. The feeling that, well, we're doing all right. We've always done all right. Well, muddling through exactly. is what we keep talking about, exactly. and, and, and we should yes. stop doing it. I think, I think it's time to realize. <laughs> just one that's final that's question, because I know you've got to go. Away. On the front page of the East Anglian Daily Times today, yes. we have a guy you know apparently quite well, Boris know. Boris Johnson, yes. um, who for some extraordinary reason jumped ship at the beginning of the campaign, having been supposedly in the end to become an actor. Yes. You've worked with him in Brussels, haven't you, for some yes. time. Um, now it's not fair to ask you a, a personal assessment, but <laughs> If you were going to jump onto a life job, who would you tend to be picking for captain to lead you off into the promised land? It is unbelievable. When I knew Boris, he was a journalist. Right. There was a journalist with a good eye for a sexy story. All oh, right. But not very much consideration for facts. Sorry. He rather made stories up. You're kidding. I'm afraid he did. Uh, no, he, uh, he, he invented stories about silly European myths. Oh, the, uh, the urban myth, which, which is very damaging. The, the big banana or the straight banana from the size of condoms. I don't know. I don't know. 
But dear, that, that, that was Boris's dream. Right. The, the fact is, he's never actually held <coughs> a real political office. Right. Mayor of London doesn't have no. any powers to speak of. No, no. And he's not going to do a decent policy to all that he no. no. I mean, and, and it hasn't. It hasn't. Uh, he's never had a ministerial dream. <coughs> no. So, it looks as if he's the guy who's reaching for the tiller of your life. No, it wasn't. But he hasn't got a certificate. Uh, exactly. I'm not, yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure he's been to navigation. <laughs> well, George, can I thank you very much? That, that, I mean, you gave me a, a sort of a new lease of life because I'm so down by the uh, appalling decision that our nation has made. Uh, but thank you, and hopefully we can hear from you later. And